Good morning, Zoo Adventures fans and friends. It's so nice to see you. We're back inside. Real quick, any of you guys that are in the storms that have been happening, I don't care where you're living, we have had in Asheboro, North Carolina, zero snow and very little ice. I know there's some friends that have got some really bad ice storms recently up north in North Carolina. We're thinking about you. And the same with you guys that are getting all that snow. Hang tough. I'm sure spring is coming, although I have really missed not having any snow. But that being said, it's awesome to see you today. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you had a wonderful Valentine's because today we're live. That's so exciting. We don't get to be live as much as we used to, so it's really cool to be able to share that with you. Your Zoo Adventures team today is Steve in front of the camera, Chelsea's behind. Good morning, everybody. It's good to have Chelsea back. And Leslie is supposed to help us with animals today, but you know how you she is. Lose I did. I lost her. I don't know where she is. Between but here and there. Between here and there. She, we had her, and then we didn't have her. But as you can see today, we're talking about skulls. We're so excited. And we're doing this because people often say, you know, I have this skull, but I don't know what it is. I have this skull, I don't know anything about it. Well, that's not exactly true. We can... Steve, one, one of those skulls has skin on it. It doesn't look like the others. It doesn't. One of these skulls does not no, look like the other. it's moving now. Uh, that's not okay. I, I think that's Leslie. It's, it's still alive. Leslie? Leslie. What are you doing, Leslie? What? What? All right. Well, what we're going to do today... <laughs> not real sure how that happened, <laughs> is tell you about skulls and kind of what more they tell you when you get a chance to look at them, which is so important because there's a lot of information, a lot of detail in those skulls that you can learn and share with others. So you do know more than you think, it's kind of weird to say that, when you see a skull. Does that make sense? Chelsea, does that make sense to you what we're talking about? So, the first thing we need to do, though, is we need to review our eaters. We need to review our eaters. We have meat eaters. We have plant eaters. And we have the eaters that eat everything. These are more general, because you can go deeper and deeper and deeper in all those different types of animals. So, meat eaters. Okay, digital friends, meat eaters, meat eaters are called, wait for it, wait for it, carnivores, carna meat, for us to eat, carnivores, omnivores are eating what? Dun, 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 fancy science words. Omnivores eat what? Chelsea, what do omnivores eat? Everything. Everything. Plants and animals. Meat and plants. And the last one is the herbivores. The herbivores eat only specific types of herbs like basil and rosemary. Absolutely. That's not true. <laughs> Chelsea, now we've sounded down a rabbit hole. Because rabbits are omnivores, or herbivores. <laughs> What's their favorite <laughs> No idea. Ours, really, they don't like parsley. They don't get parsley. They don't like parsley. They do like, like grape leaves and things like that. So, I'm not really sure. My rabbit doesn't like basil. Your rabbit doesn't like basil? Leslie, does she, what does your rabbit like? Leslie's here, so uh, she has a rabbit, too. He likes parsley and cilantro. He does like parsley. Like, he's yeah. different, so he's different oh, from he ours. Parsley. Interesting. Very cool. So, thank you. Our, our digital guests are correcting us. It's plants. Oh. <laughs> plants. Thank you very much, digital friends. <laughs> not just herbs. No. Not just herbs. I need to make sure I correct myself when I make those kind of, those kind of little sly moves, which, which aren't that funny most of the time. <laughs> All right, guys. Come on over to the table. And I'm going to put the Muppet. Oh, did you see the Muppet? It's alive with the eyes of Google. The new Muppet. Same old Muppet, but we wanted to jazz him up a little bit for you guys. So, the Muppet down. 
Carnivore. What gives it away? What gives it away as a carnivore? What teeth are missing in a carnivore? You guys remember? We've talked about some of this before. We've kind of hit it all in general with specific animals. So that's why we thought we'd bring it all together today and kind of do it all as one episode to share with you one way you can tell they're these animals. So the carnivore, which is a great example of, has these sharp, sharp, long canines. Those are the canine teeth. Oh, I think somebody said they're missing molars. Very good. Yes. They're missing those grinding molars back here in the back. Nice job. So they have these molars. These are still a type of molar, but not the grinding molars that you see in some of the other animals, the omnivores and the herbivores. They have these fancy science word carnassials or carnassial molars in the back. They're not flat. They're not grinding up food. So most carnivores are cutting, tearing, and swallowing their food. Maybe like some of you guys are doing with your breakfast bananas. Nice job on the molar answer there. But these are the canines again. Those are the killing teeth. These incisors are cutting teeth. Just like you cut the hot dog, you cut the broccoli, you cut the Snickers bar with your front teeth, and then you grind them with your back teeth. This guy can't do it. Who is this, by the way? Any guesses? On what this carnivore, straight carnivore, exclusively a meat eater, and we do have this type of animal at the North Carolina Zoo. Any guesses? It's a feline type of cat. One of the largest on the planet. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, it's an African lion. My roar can't be quite heard five miles away, but African lion, carnivore, killing teeth, cutting teeth, and then shearing teeth in the back. We'll share another carnivore with you, but he's a little bit different. I'm assuming you guys can still hear me okay with the Muppet being down, but I'm going to hold it this time. Look at this guy. This is a carnivore, but look at the teeth. Teeth. What? What teeth? Oh, not the, Oops. Sorry about that. No teeth here, but still a carnivore. Chomping at fish chomping at animals that come by does the alligator snapping turtle. How about that for a snap? Leslie, you want to put your finger and see what happens? No, thank you. Snap. Snap it right off. Remember? Nice. And snap it right off. Remember they have that little lure? It kind of looks like, a, looks like a worm in the mouth, kind of like a tongue. Flip it around. Fish comes in to grab it. That's it. So when you start looking at skulls, you can begin to say, okay, you know what? I do know something about that animal. This is a large animal, lives in the water. I found it near the water, so to speak. This is a, this is a replica. So maybe that's what it is. But we do have an example of an animal that looks like this, but as an herbivore. Leslie, can you help us real quick? Of course. Course? Thank you, Leslie. Leslie's going to be our animal wrangler today. Da -da -da. Valentine's Day. Everybody have a good Valentine's Day? I hope so. Check this out. So, Chelsea, it's on you this time to get up a close and personal to that Galapagos tortoise head. Remember, we're focusing primarily... 
It's like you say, Bob? yes, this is me. This is me. Do you know who you have, Leslie? Uh, this is Wallace. This is Wallace, the, dar the Galapagos tortoise. Western Santa Cruz Island Galapagos tortoise. Giant tortoise. Not very giant, but you guys have met the tortoises before. You know that he's going to get much, much bigger in time, aren't you, Wallace? Yes. Nice. Good job. But look at the skull. We're looking at the skull, remember. We're focusing on that today. And you can see the beak. On the Galapagos tortoise, the beak is more for cutting and tearing fruits and plants. So although the beak looks the same this time, there is a difference in what they're eating. So the same types of structures are used for different purposes. Galapagos tortoise uses his beak. Same as the box turtle, by the way. But box turtles are actually eating both plants and animals. The Galapagos tortoise you see here is eating only plants. Able to munch and cut and tear, but no teeth again. No grinding teeth, as you saw on the skull of the snapping turtle. No turtles have teeth. So you need to know a little bit more about them to figure out what they're eating. You can't just rely on the skull sometimes. But on this guy, Wallace, Galapagos tortoise, western Santa Cruz Island giant tortoise. Galapagos tortoise is so much easier to say. <laughs> Cutting and grinding, it, cutting those, that fruit and vegetables, those plants, and then again, just swallowing them whole. Wallace, the Galapagos tortoise. He's going to continue to grow, though. Boy, he's not even close to being full grown. Thank you very much, Miss Leslie. Another herbivore. So we had carnivore, carnivore. Now I'm going to switch it up and go to an herbivore. And this is something you might find sort of in North Carolina. Now, this is a Thompson's gazelle. I know you're saying, no, 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 Steve, I don't have Thompson's gazelles. No, we don't. But we have the white-tailed deer, right? So when you start looking at skulls, and this is a great example, you can begin to figure out what type of animal it might be. You might not get all the way down to species, but you can go, you know what? If I can figure out that if it's a carnivore or an herbivore, maybe I can look a little deeper. Maybe I can do some more quick research to look more specifically at animals. But look at those grinding teeth. Can you get them, Chelsea? Yeah. Those are those grinding teeth. And if you look at the skull as well and where the eyes are, Sorry, Chelsea, I'm going to move this around a little bit. My bad. The eyes are kind of on the side of the skull. So that also tells us something. That are looking for danger. Because they don't need to look in front of them. They, can't, they don't need to judge distance because, guess what? The grass isn't going very far. I know where the grass is. It's right here. But my eyes on the side, I can still look for danger. For the Thompson's gazelle, I can still look for cheetahs. I can look for lions that might be hunting me. And when I stand up, I can see even better around me. It's actually, if I'm, a, if I'm a Thompson's gazelle, I should probably be down here somewhere. And then plenty of eyes looking around give me an opportunity to look for danger. So eyes on the side, another thing you can look for on the skull of an animal to say, you know what, that might be an animal that's being eaten by other animals, having those eyes on the side. On the carnivores, on the predators, the eyes are often whoops, in front. Having eyes in front provide that amazing binocular, two eyes, binocular, two eyes, you guys know binoculars that you look through? Two eyes. Two-eyed vision. And the, one of the most important things this does for you is provide depth perception. The ability to judge distances. 
how far away something is. How close do I need to be before I jump after that animal and, and, try, to, and try to take it down as prey? So the eyes on the skull also tell you something about the lifestyle of the animal. Not just the teeth, but the eyes as well. Where are those eyes located? What about a bird? What about a bird? Birds are a little bit more of a challenge. Even though Chelsea is our resident bird nerd. <laughs> Chelsea and Nikki, I guess we could give Nikki her props on that one. We look a little bit deeper. That's a whole episode, isn't it? We need to do birds and bird totalness. Because there's so many things to talk about with birds. We can look at beaks, we can look at color, we can look at size, we can look at teeth, we can look at teeth, we can look at claws, <laughs> all that kind of stuff in birds. But this is a barred owl skull. Eyes in front tell us carnivore or omnivore, and that really sharp, tearing beak. Again, there's a carnivore's tool as well. So there's so much to learn by looking at skulls. And when you see them, when you find them, if you're lucky enough to find them in your, on one of your hikes, one of your walks around in your backyard, you really do know a lot about the animal. If you start looking at the teeth, where are the eyes? And things like that. Barred owl with that sharp, tearing beak. No teeth. So another animal is going to tear that chunk off. Remember, carnivores do that. Carnivores tear and swallow. No chewing here. No chewing here. Let's meet another carnivore. Leslie, can you show us another critter here? Let's do that one. Here it is. <laughs> That's a beautiful box. Thank you, thank you. It's a beautiful box. I, I can bring something out of it. It's kind of nice to, be able to kind of share with you kind of behind the scenes, guys. We do have these, we have these totes that we travel with. Right now we're not going off park, so everything is done on park at the zoo for right now. Even though the zoo is open, time to tickets and making reservations. The animals are still coming from their homes to outside to another building. So we rely on these totes to keep the animals comfortable and warm. You got them? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whoa! This is so cool. Who do you have today, Miss Leslie? Uh, this is Slinky. And Slinky is a... A... Snake. Yes. Yes. Good job. So far, so good. Um, any other thoughts about what type of snake it is? Mm. I wonder if our digital guests could know. I think uh, may, some of us may have seen this type of snake before. Oh, maybe does, the, does that white chin mean something, maybe? Mm, yeah. It does? Okay. So he's not, he's not a black snake. I can see he's got all kinds of pattern on him. He's not a black snake. Correct. And I think I've heard before that the racers are almost all black and skinnier. Mm -hmm. So it's a black racer. Right, and so a lot of people what is this? sometimes call these black snakes because we do have yeah. different types of black snakes in North Carolina, but okay. there are a difference between, like you said, black racer, mm -hmm. and then this is an eastern rat snake or a black oh, rat snake. Oh, an eastern yeah. rat snake. Okay. You, you might still hear some people say black rat snake, okay. um, which is not wrong. So, okay. but, um, so but black snake is a little hard because then you're talking about multiple types. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, so you need to kind of... Like, once again, not wrong, but, but just not specific, right. not, you know. It is a snake and it is black. Yes, so exactly. therefore. <laughs> and the eastern rat snake is a carnivore, correct? Yes. And they're eating primarily... Um, rodents, mice, small um, mammals. Okay. Um, and some have been known to eat, these guys eat eggs. Really? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you might see them climbing up trees okay. to get into bird nests. He looks like he's very comfortable with you. Are you warm to him? Yeah, I, oh, well, I am very warm She's today. She's always warm. <laughs> <laughs> but also, yeah, like you can tell I'm like not even really holding on to You look it. like a tree. Um, so I'm just kind of, yeah, this nice tree to branch for him to explore and, and wrap around to anchor himself and okay. 
And he's holding on to me. I'm not holding on to him. Basically. Oh, great point. So he's doing the work right here. Mm -hmm. He's holding on to you. That's neat. Yeah. And as a carnivore, do you know anything about his teeth? Let's talk. Let's see if we can see about his teeth. Can he open his mouth for us? That, no, I will not. No? That's <laughs> no, probably that's a, a safe that, thing. That's a good way to get bit. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to put our fingers in front of his mouth and wiggle right, them around. Yeah. Okay, Any okay. animal, um, I don't put my fingers in front of my rabbit either because he's... <laughs> In fact, that's a very, very... Funny. Did you want to say hi to Bun while you're... <laughs> He's probably like, Bun watching? Yeah, whatever, yeah. <laughs> uh, where's my food? Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, any, any animal, you always want to keep your hands out of their sure. mouths because yeah. that's a good Great way. Tip. Just like people, you keep your hands out of people's mouths, too. That's an awesome tip. <laughs> and not venomous. Not venomous, no. We wouldn't be so handling no the, the snake. Well, it, yeah, so it doesn't have those big front fangs that kind of push out the venom, mm -hmm. but they do have like teeth that are like fang-like almost. Yep. So they're very thin, very long. And then the neatest thing, oh, perfect, is Thanks. that they curve backwards. And that curving backwards is actually how they are able to kind of keep their food in their mouths. Um, so, even though it's not alive right. when they eat it. Yeah. But since they don't have hands, they can't hold on to it, right? Kind of work it back down, right? Yeah, so one of the other cool things about their skull, which is a way to tell a snake skull from any other skull, is that the bottom jaw is not connected. So there are two sides of the jaw, basically. Um, and in the middle, where like our chin is, mm -hmm. they, don't have a, they don't have bone there. It's just kind of all skin and cartilage. So it expands for the, with yeah. the size of prey? Okay. Right, and then they can move one side of the jaw um, without moving the other side of the jaw. So they, they kind, kind of, of back. yeah, they kind of take that and then pull back and then take the other side and they're, it's like walking back Neat. to the food. Yeah. That is so again, something else you can see. And this is the skull of a python, by the way. This is not the skull of a rat snake. No, his is going to be much smaller. So his is going to be, but I love the teeth. And I like to, I think what you said is perfect. So when they bite onto something, because some animals, some snakes will take prey that's still alive. Right. They can't escape, can they? Right. They get stuck on the prey, mm -hmm. the, on the teeth, and they try to get out. Yeah, exactly. So a really cool skull and really cool lifestyle for the snake. And again, you see the eyes kind of in the front. They rely on that tongue, of course. The tongue is tasting the air. But eyes in front and those teeth, those killing teeth. Or in this time, killing or gripping teeth. Even. Right, yeah. They're basically their hands. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. In the way that the jaw moves. So he's very comfortable. He is. He's kind of just chilling on you. This your... is what I love about snakes, is when they just kind of hang out with you. Right. I mean, how cute is that, right? That is so cool. <laughs> Here I am. That's what yeah, just hanging. Just feeling good. Just me being me. Feeling, bit, feeling calm. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you very much, Leslie. We have no, one more critter to share with you in a second. All right. But before we get to that last animal, we're talking about skeletons and skulls, primarily skulls. Do we have one? Do you and I have a skull? Chelsea, you have a skull? Chelsea's no, got it's, a... just, it's just kind of mushy. It's kind of mushy? <laughs> I was going to say... Kind of rolls around. I was going to say hard-headed, <laughs> so, but we'll stick with mushy, I guess. That's fine. <laughs> no, of course, yeah, we've got a skull, don't we? What type of vor, what type of eater are we, by definition? Some of us make choices on what we eat. By definition, what are we? What can we eat? What are we kind of built to eat? Look at this. This is a replica. This is not, this is not one of our ex-educators that we decided to get rid of. <laughs> I can't hold his mouth together. There we go. So this is the skull of a human replica. And you know, you've smiled before. You've seen people smile. That they've got their cutting teeth in the front. We don't have any incisors. We don't have any, we don't have any canines, Steve. Well, yeah, you do. They're just not as well formed as you see in wolves or bears or the lion we saw earlier. And most important, as an omnivore, we have those grinding teeth in the back. Can you guys see those? Those are the teeth that we need to make sure we're brushing very, very well. We don't want to get cavities in those teeth. They're hard to get to sometimes. But most omnivores are going to have all of those teeth. Now, some might have distinct canines for using for different purposes, maybe to, 
to scare animals away. They've got sharp canines. But there you get the idea that, uh, that this omnivore, this omnivore, has those kind of teeth in there. I have forward-facing eyes, so I can judge distance, because I am an omnivore. I still need to see food sometimes. If I am a chimpanzee who has eyes in front, or a baboon that has eyes in front, I still need to judge where that animal is, because I might hunt it. 15% of a chimpanzee's diet is meat. Gorillas, not so much. And they've got those really big canines. But the eyes in front help me judge that distance, give us that binocular vision. And then all the different type of teeth, omnivore. And again, we're doing this so you guys can realize, you know what, if I find a skull, if I see a skull, I can begin to get an idea of what's out there. And skeletons are cool. They tell us a lot about stuff. But not all animals have an inside skeleton. We wanted to share one animal with you that doesn't have an inside skeleton, like you and I do, an internal skeleton. But this animal has an exo-outside skeleton. An exoskeleton. And here it comes. Miss Leslie's doing an amazing job with the animals today. Chelsea doing the camera work. Awesome to have extra hands today with different animals, so thank you two for helping out today. Do you guys know what this is? Saw at least one heart. Not everybody loves this animal. Here's a thumbs up. Come on, a little love for this guy. <laughs> there we go, we got some more likes. <laughs> This is a millipede, a giant African millipede. We do have millipedes in North Carolina. They're not quite this big, but they can be two inches, three inches long, believe it or not. But this animal has an exoskeleton. You see Miss Leslie with the gloves on. That's more to protect the millipede from Leslie. Maybe Leslie has salt on her hands. Maybe she has lotion. Maybe she has some sort of... Um, I have a hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. Yeah. And millipedes will clean themselves using their mouth. So we're trying to protect the millipede from Leslie, not the other way around. Um, so that's why you see the gloves. But the exoskeleton, the external, the outside skeleton, is what's keeping all the inside stuff where it's supposed to be. So they still have something providing that structure Something providing that protection, it's just on the outside of the animal, not the inside of the animal. And sometimes animals shed their exoskeleton. This is the exoskeleton. This is the molt of a giant Caribbean cockroach or giant cave cockroach. They shed their entire skeleton on the outside. Not like a snake, not like a lizard who's shedding their skin, just one layer. These guys get rid of their entire exoskeleton. Spiders do the same thing. Scorpions. A lot of your invertebrates, animals without a backbone, shed that entire exoskeleton. That's the only way they can grow. Their body continues to grow, and to shed the exoskeleton is the only way to get bigger. So again, this is a giant cave cockroach, and then Miss Leslie has a millipede, African giant millipede. That is so cool. I love the way the legs move. It almost looks like a, a wave going down the body. It also feels kind of cool. It does feel kind of yeah. cool, yeah. It's very light. Look at him walking on the tips of your fingers. I know. On our Adventures in Edzucation page, there's a new craft that's up. And I have got to give, I told Nikki when she did this, I said, you are kidding me, Nikki. Where did you find that? That is so cool. Where did you find it? You know what she said to me? I didn't find it. I made it. She drew this. How cool is that? And, whoop, 
And you can see this on that Adventures in Education page. She colored one. She might get back. <laughs> and there's another one. This is different. This, I don't know which one is the front, to be honest with you, so we'll show you both. <laughs> it bled through. And then look at this one. This is so cool to me. Wolf and cat. I think you were right the first time. I think the other side is the... The other side is the, is the original? Yeah. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. And then for these, you can just color them however you want. These are called sugar skulls. I think that's what she called it. They're very day of the deadish, very Halloweenish. But there's so much information in these skulls. There's so much info in the skulls that we wanted to be able to share it with you. I'm going to come behind the table and go through real quick one more time with, the, with these. Remember, we're talking about skulls, carnivores, omnivores, herbivores, things like that. Carnivores with those sharp cutting teeth, eyes in front. This was a lion, sea turtle. This is another type of carnivore. I mean, snapping turtle. Another type of carnivore. Our Thompson's gazelle, the herbivore with those flat teeth. Eyes on the side to look for danger. And then some kind of miscellaneous down here with a python. How about those teeth on the python? As Miss Leslie told us, teeth curved backwards so the prey can't escape or to help them swallow their food. The exoskeleton of a man. I think I tricked him, Chelsea, on that one. The exoskeleton, this might get that to the glare, isn't so bad, of, a, of a, an invertebrate, the bird skull, again, another carnivore, eyes in front. Do you think about that, where the location of the bird's eyes make a difference? They sure do. And then finally, an omnivore, and a great example of an omnivore is you and me. I get it that some, uh, some of us choose not to eat meat, and that's okay. But we're built to do that. I hope you had a great time in today's live zoo adventure, bringing you animals kind of inside out to share the outside of the animals. Um, Wednesday's, Wednesday's episode is all about locomotion, how animals move. I'll be looking again at kind of leg structure and body structure and how different animals move throughout their environment. And next Monday, you just need to be here. Next Monday, you just need to be here. <laughs> you guys have a great week. We'll be behind the computer on Wednesday answering your questions and taking your comments. Thanks to those of us, those of you that were answering questions today. We appreciate you being here. Um, I'll be behind answering questions on Wednesday. Leslie, are you answering questions Wednesday? Leslie's nodding. Yes, she'll be answering questions on Wednesday. So we'll see you then for sure. Zoo Adventures. Today, Steve was in front of the camera. Leslie was in front of the camera a little bit today. Chelsea was behind. Have a good day, everybody. So we'll see you again soon. Stay safe. The zoo is open. Time tickets. Make those reservations online. Remember to bring your masks when you come to the zoo uh, in person. Enjoy your time. Stay safe. We'll see you later, y'all. Bye.